Those are the headlines we are tracking for you this evening. Part of Dubai-based Technodome Group, Elista, an electronics, home appliances, IT and mobile accessories brand, has announced its plans uh, to expand operations outside India. Aligned with its vision to make an India for the world, Elista has already kick-started operations in the UAE and is mulling an entry into the CIS and MENA region by next year. For this ambitious expansion plan, the venture will be investing up to 400 crore rupees in a phased manner till 2025. And to elaborate on all of these plans and the road ahead for Elista, joining me now is its CMD, Saket Gaurav. Saket, welcome to Startup Street. Like I mentioned, Elista has kick-started its operations in the UAE and is looking to expand in the CIS and MENA region by next year. What is the kind of impact you hope to create in these regions? How big is the opportunity? Also, will you be setting up production facilities there? If you could uh, give us specifics of your global expansion plans. Thank you so much, Shruti, for having me on board. I'm, I'm really, I, I'll appreciate that. Uh, for the global expansion, yes, uh, we have just started in Middle East. Uh, we have a very good solid background of distribution network in Middle East, CIS and, and Africa region. So, you know, to start a brand uh, in international market, to bring it into global market, UAE is the best marketplace because it happens to be the window of all these, uh, all these markets. So this is how we have started. Uh, we already have our existing customer base with whom we have been dealing for over two decades now. Yes. So bringing Elista into global market is for us in our business, just addition of one more brand in the existing pool of brands that we operate in. Okay. And the production, yes, uh, we are looking forward to uh, setting up our own production unit uh, in India. And uh, it is it is under process. All right. The markets, uh, as I said, uh, that we wanted to start with is UAE. We have already launched, launched uh, Elista in UAE uh, a couple of weeks back. Uh, going forward, we are planning to take this brand to Africa, CIS and other uh, GCC sure. countries. And, and also for your global expansion plan, Saket, you plan to invest up to 400 crore rupees in a phased manner till 2025. In fact, you're also aiming to clock revenue of 1500 crore rupees by 2025 from both Indian and international operations. A, what makes you bullish? B, also going forward, what is the revenue mix going to be for Elista between domestic and global operations? Now, to answer your further second question, the revenue mix is going to be uh, 50 versus 100. For okay. example, if you have 500 crores in domestic India market, the export market will contribute almost 1,000 crores. Hmm. Now, if you talk about this ambitious, uh, ambitious revenue numbers which you are talking about, honestly, 1,500 crores uh, is not a very big number. It is, it is very conservative because if you look at the market, the current India market for consumer electronics stands at $75 billion. Hmm. And the re-export market, the export market in India contributes $15 billion. Now, you'll be surprised, Shruti, in maybe coming six years, the re-export business is going to grow at a pace of 700 percentage, which will be almost $125 billion. Okay. And the domestic market will also grow up to $100 sure. billion. So, you know, when we talk about uh, the market potential, which is uh, in collective, around $225 billion, mm -hmm. and, 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 and the share of Elista, if we go with very, very conservative numbers, we are okay. taking just $100 million, which is $1,500. Yeah. So I think these numbers are quite conservative. Okay, okay. I hope, I hope uh, let's, let's be optimistic that we attain this conservative numbers. All right, so, so the numbers are conservative, and let's talk about the Indian opportunity. You officially launched in 2020 during the pandemic. Elista now expects to gross 200 crores in revenue in the current fiscal ending March 2023 and cross 500 crores in revenue by 2025 in the Indian market. What has worked for you? It's a competitive space, Saket. Uh, what makes you bullish and what is your USP that sets you apart from the rest? See, uh, USP is very simple, a quality product at very affordable prices. Mm. Now, what has worked well for us in India is that we have targeted the real market uh, that, that, that demands our product, which, which matches to the requirement of our product, the product that we produce, and that is rural market. No, you know, rural market is increasing massively in India. The demand is, is going high by every passing day. So what we did is we targeted the rural market and the channel uh, business for us in India. 
So we have an existing uh, network of almost uh, 450 to 500 distributors all across India that caters to almost 15,000 counters. Now this is this is what uh, is is giving uh, you know giving uh, more, more motivation to us okay. because the market is rural. We are not targeting the urban sector as of now. Hmm. And the second part is the online business, which also sure. we focus on. Okay, yeah. uh, Saket, you know, you mentioned earlier in the interview that you're in advanced stages of setting up a new manufacturing facility in India to support your expansion here and in international markets as well. Where is this facility going to be and by when do you hope to launch? Also, what kind of production capacity are you aiming at? Uh, see, this uh, production uh, facility is going to be in south of India. Okay. Uh, we are still into the process of documentation. The land allocation has not yet been done. Uh, mm -hmm. I hope to I hope to complete all these formalities by end of January 2023. Once uh, this plant is operational, uh, we look forward to producing TVs and monitors in the first phase. By end of 2023, we'll okay. be able to uh, start our TV and uh, monitors sure. production in India. Mm -hmm. So the capacity is too early to discuss, but yes, whatever we will be producing uh, will be uh, will be sufficient for our brand to cater. Uh, okay. for the domestic India market as well as the export market. All right. Uh, Saket, what trends do you see emerging in the India market? What are consumers looking for? And also, if you could talk to us about your best-selling products. Now, see, the consumer trend in India is changing. It's changing because the rural India is developing. Now, now, now the demand for these gadgets is, is increasingly high. And uh, these gadgets are no more luxury items for, for people in India. They are getting used to of that. Hmm. And it has become a necessity now. Now the product trend is also changing quite rapidly. People are moving from normal TVs to smart TVs. So sure. smart TV is, a, is an entry model, uh, you know, entertainment segment for every household. Then uh, if, if we talk about the, if, if we talk about the product categories that we wanted to focus in, uh, probably uh, it is going to be a product which is not very common in entrant brands in India as of now. A uh, product which I would like to say is dishwashers. Okay. So dishwasher is a product wherein we are really putting lots of efforts in, in bringing this product to the rural homes sure. uh, in India. This is again a product which, uh, you know, if you remember in back, uh, ba back in 20, uh, you know, in the beginning of 2000, uh, washing machine used to be a luxury segment. Absolutely, and Saket. Yes, it is. The, the same is going sure. to happen with washer. By 2030, you will see dishwasher in each okay. and every house. All right. One final question, and if you could quickly answer that, uh, you know, let's talk about your future product uh, pipeline. I believe you have plans to expand in the smart TV space that you spoke about, and into new categories such as chest freezers and water dispensers. If you could quickly elaborate on these plans, what's in store, and at what price points? Uh, see, uh, two products which you named, chest freezer and water dispensers, is a part of our B2B business expansion because apart from B2C, we wanted to expand to B2B segment for which we have chosen chest, chest freezer and water dispenser. Now, if you talk about the price point, uh, let me start with the product positioning first of all. We wanted to position our products in the, in the, in the top of tier 2 segment. Price-wise, it is going to be in the bottom of tier 2 segment. So quality-wise, it is going to be on the top of tier 2. Oh, all right. All right, Saket, we've completely run out of time, but many thanks and wish you the very best with all your aggressive plans. Uh, thank you very much for joining us on Startup Street. Thank you so much, Ruti. Thank you. Bye-bye. Moving on, Fountain, an HR tech platform, has forayed into the Indian market, posted Series C fundraise of $185 million. Now, the company is backed by the likes of SoftBank, B Capital, Mire Asset Venture Investment, DCM Origin Ventures, and others. While strengthening its presence globally, the all-in-one hiring platform will now enable companies to find and hire the right people faster in India. Fountain is determined to ease the challenges faced by the Indian companies in the high-volume hiring space. Joining us now to discuss its India plans is Om Prakash Murpala, head Fountain India. Om Prakash, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Now, like I said, you're an all-in-one applicant tracking system for high-volume hiring. So how is your platform different from other hiring platform? What sets you apart? Uh, Om Prakash, we can't you hear you. I think you're on. Okay, yeah, we can hear you now. Please go ahead. 
Thank you for having me on the show. Uh, yes, uh, Fountain uh, is the number one uh, high volume hiring platform uh, in the world. What sets us apart from uh, all the others in the space is we are especially suited for blue and high, uh, high blue and gray color uh, workforce. Uh, we raised, uh, like you said, uh, one eighty five million dollars uh, in our. Um, last round, which is C and uh, C1 rounds with an emphasis on international expansion, especially in India. Uh, some of the world's most well-known brands, including startups, unicorns, uh, and Fortune 100 companies are using Fountain today to hire all of their blue collar, gray collar, temporary, uh, and hourly uh, employees all across the world. Uh, we use uh, AI, uh, natural language processing, um, machine learning to improve time to hire, increase applicant to hire conversion, improve operational efficiency, and uh, most importantly, reduce uh, cost of employee acquisition, which doesn't seem to be uh, talked about in all our other uh, platforms in the HR tech space. All right, and uh, take me through some of the services and products you have on offer, and what are some that you have in the pipeline as of now? Sure. Um, so we provide end-to-end uh, -end automation of all recruitment processes. Uh, like I said, we offer AI-based uh, chatbot, which helps provide a seamless conversational experience for applicants. And it also serves as a recruitment assistant for recruiters who can deploy this tool and reduce their workloads by up to 90%. Uh, right. We provide tight integration with uh, WhatsApp, uh, where 90% of the workforce in India are already present. Uh, we also provide a huge catalog of uh, integrations, including uh, sourcing, job boards, phone interviews, uh, onboarding, learning management, assessments, ID verification, and uh, the most important of them all, background checks. Uh, we also connect uh, pretty much to all available HRMS platforms out there, so in summary, we are a one-stop solution for all high volume hiring requirements. Right, so one-stop solution for all high, uh, hiring volu high volume hiring requirements. Um, talk to us about your India presence. It is very small currently, but how much do you plan to invest in the Indian market? What's the potential you see here? And talk to us even about the excellent center that you're looking, that you're in the process of setting up out here. Absolutely. Uh, so we have been in operation uh, for over the last uh, one and a half year uh, in India. We are working with multiple companies uh, currently. Some of them are in the gig economy space, some of them in retail, and some of them in the Horeca space. Operations are ongoing in uh, 24 cities uh, as we speak across India, with more and more cities getting uh, added each week. Uh, we support five Indian languages uh, today. And uh, we are currently working on adding five more Indian languages to our platform. Uh, just in the last uh, few months, tens of thousands of candidates have been processed through our system and uh, with an applicant to hire ratio of around 30%. In some instances, uh, we have been able to help our customers uh, decrease their time to hire by up to 90%. Okay. So uh, to make a bold projection, uh, we anticipate ramping up uh, to processing more than 1 million applicants through our platform in 2023. All right. So and what... uh, uh, we are actually uh, building a world-class <laughs> R&D team, uh, the center of excellence uh, you mentioned. It is a remote first uh, center of excellence. We will be adding engineers, product managers, designers, uh, and uh, pretty much uh, all functions to support this uh, Center for Excellence. And uh, we are also planning to build a world-class sales and uh, go-to-market team, including sourcing and operations teams. And uh, finally, uh, we want to build a global support and operations center right here in India. All right, so you want to do that in India, but how uh, how important is India in the larger scheme of things for the company? Talk to us about revenues. What will the revenue mix be? How much do you expect to see from India? And what's the road to profitability looking like? Sure, uh, like I mentioned at the top of the interview, right? Like the blue and gray collar hiring uh, workers are very, very underrepresented in HR tech. And we've seen this uh, globally, not just India. Right. So focusing just on the numbers in India, where we are seeing, as per Niti Ayog's latest stats, uh, uh, we have a half a billion dollar strong workforce. So 
high volume hiring, just the term high volume hiring is redefined when it comes to India. And uh, we have 300 million uh, workers uh, with smartphones. Almost all of them have WhatsApp enabled. So we have a very phone savvy labor workforce. 7.7 .7 million of these are in the gig economy today. And this is projected to grow to 25 million by the end of the decade. Okay. Uh, the retail industry alone is expected to grow to employ uh, 56 million people by the end of uh, this year. So similar growth is expected in manufacturing, hospitality services, right. logistics, warehousing, and adjacent industries. So obviously, this is a huge uh, space that needs a solution. A solution like Fountain, where we've actually perfected this, we have uh, product market fit we've found in other countries all over the world. We are bringing this uh, technology, uh, the technology that we use to process millions of uh, candidates leading to hundreds of thousands of uh, hires per month. So to sum it up, we are very, very confident that with these kind of uh, numbers in India, profitability can be achieved if we can uh, continue to execute and scale our operations. All right, so profitability can be achieved once you scale up your operations. Om Prakash, we're completely out of time on the show, but thank you so much for joining us and we wish you all the best going forward. Absolutely, thank you so much. All right, on that note, it's time for us to head into a short break. But coming up next, a special report on how plant-based meat called the future of food fared in 2022 and the love celebs gave to the smart protein market. Stay tuned for that. Welcome back. You're still with us on Startup Street. Call it mock meat, smart protein, alternative protein, or simply plant-based meat. The startups pioneering what's being called the future of food certainly titillated the taste buds of celebrities, investors, and even large FMCG majors in 2022. Funding and deals doubled, and there could be more on the plate in 2023. Take a look. This chicken kebab is made from plant-based meat. What was a fad until 2021 went mainstream in 2022? Now, India has over 50 smart protein startups that are offering 200 products that are just like meat, taste and texture intact. Last year, plant-based meat startups raised about $10 million, which was a negligible fraction of the global sum. But this year has been better, with planet-conscious celebrities leading the culinary shift. The first such investment we saw this year came from Virat Kohli and Anushka Sharma, who became investors and brand ambassadors for vegan meat startup, Blue Tribe. Virat and I keep talking about how we can lower our impact on the planet and make it a better place for the future generations. One of the aspects of our lives we've changed is adopting a plant-forward diet, which means not consuming any meat at all. And that's not only because we are animal lovers, but also because of the impact meat consumption has on the planet. Joining Virat Kohli in the field of smart protein was his former India team captain and teammate, MS Dhoni, who invested an undisclosed sum in Shaka Harry. The company, which raised over $2 million in seed funding in 2022, now plans to expand aggressively. This is a sector that typically requires a little bit of customer education. It's still new, it's exciting. Customers still want to know what's there. Um, and who better than um, Mahi coming in and uh, leading that charge from the front. We are currently in about 10 cities around. Uh, we are in 10 cities, we are omni-channel. We are in about 800 locations uh, across the country. We are servicing, I think, in excess of uh, 30,000 customers. Um, and we are expecting to triple that in the next few months. Celebrities are not just investors in plant-based meat startups, but have also turned entrepreneurs. Last year, Bollywood actors Ritesh Deshmukh and Janelia D'Souza launched their own smart protein brand, Imagine Meats. This year, they in fact partnered with Starbucks to sell Imagine Meats vegan products. We are currently self-funded um, and um, we are right now uh, looking at scaling it up. We are now available, like I said, in more than 60 cities. Um, but um, we, are, we are the only plant-based meat company probably with 13 products, you know, when we launched. We didn't launch with one or two. But it's a consumer that will probably taste everyone and figure out, you know, I like this here, I like that here. And um, I guess... Which is healthy competition yeah, yeah. as well. Like, you know, it's great to be... And I mean, right now we're here with 13 products, like Rathay said, we're the only brand. But it's nice to have people grow with you, to grow the segment. Yeah. 
and ready to grow the plant-based meat market with celebrities and startups are large FMCG firms such as Tata Consumer Products and ITC. But the year's biggest surprise came with the foray of online meat unicorn, Licious, with its new vertical, Uncrave. So it was almost like, yeah, because we are the conscience keepers of carnivorism in some sense, we said, yeah, our consumers deserve better when they want to exercise that choice. So who else apart from Licious, uh, you know, to to offer that uh, choice to consumers. So I think that's how we are thinking about it. Yeah, jo saw din aap saal mein meat nahi khate ho, for any reason, you know, socio-cultural reason, you know, religious reason, whatever, right? And India is a country of multiple ethnicities, cultures, subcultures. I think this is a product that gives you your meat fix when you can't have it, right? So that sharp positioning is very clear in our head. India's smart protein market could more than double in size from 12,000 crore rupees in 2022 to over 30,000 crore rupees by 2030. By the end of this decade, India could also be exporting nearly 15,000 crore rupees worth of plant-based meat. In fact, in September, Gujarat-based Green Nest exported India's first consignment with about 5,000 kilograms of plant-based meat. These numbers clearly show that while India's startups are driving the shift towards sustainable technologies like renewable energy and electric vehicles, they are also moving the country to a more sustainable palette. Bureau Report, CNBC TV 18. Well, with that, it's a wrap on this edition of Startup Street. More news and updates coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.